Right, so I'm back with another video about the Pentax DFA 70 to 210 lens. And in this video, I'm just going to clear up a few things that I sort of stumbled across in my initial impressions video of the lens. Now, the first thing was that when I went out to record that video, the first impressions video, I did not calibrate the lens to the camera. I was using the Pentax K3 Mark III. And, uh, you know, that was a rookie mistake. You should always do that, really. Whenever you get a new lens, you should, the first thing you should do, really, with DSLRs is calibrate the lens to the camera. And, um, you know, I've got other Pentax bodies that I'm going to need to do that with, the K3. I'm not sure if this lens will work fully on the K5, but we'll, we'll find that out in due time. Um, so... Yeah, the first impressions video was a bit hit and miss, quite literally, because I found that the lens was sort of, it was front and back focusing a lot of the time. But the other thing was, I think that the way that I had the K3 Mark III set up with the autofocus settings for the motocross that I do, for like erratic subjects and stuff, I think it was causing the lens to like have sort of micro jitters almost when it was autofocusing. So I went back and I did a little bit of refinement with that and I seem to have sorted the problem out. Now, I always advocate that you do a proper calibration test and I've got a video about that. I'll link it in the description below. Now, I, I didn't do that. I just, I played with the um, the near and the back focus and I've got it to where it seems right. So it's a plus three on, on my camera. And um, I also, I turned off image stabilization because I'm shooting the motocross. When I want to freeze action, I'm shooting usually anything above, definitely above one over one thousandth of a second. But it's usually in the region of one over one thousand two hundred fiftieth or one over one thousand six hundredth of a second or more. And I just, I felt like the image stabilization just wasn't, it was having a negative impact on the images. I don't think it was helping out whatsoever. So I turned that off. And now that I've done that, I'm really impressed with the images. It's um, it's everything that I thought it would be. It's nice and sharp. And the Pentax colors with the HD lens coat, and bear in mind on this lens, it's just, it's lovely. Deep, rich colors, sharp images. And um, the autofocus is, it's not PLM fast, right? It is the new version of the SDM lens, this uh, motor, this autofocus motor in the 70 to 210. It's not PLM fast. So I've been using the 55 to 300 PLM. The autofocus on that lens is just, it's like lightning. It's so fast. The autofocus on this lens is really quick. It's just not up to the same <laughs> lightning speed as the um, 55 to 300 PLM. Obviously, I've used that lens in the past, the 55 to 300 PLM, and I've advocated for that, and I still do advocate for it because it just ticks so many boxes on so many different levels, from price to um, performance to ease of use to transport. I mean, it folds up, it compacts right down into your gear bag. If, you know, if I was pushed to say, um, out of all the lenses that I've owned or potentially will own, if I could only choose one lens, <laughs> this sounds stupid because I've just bought the DFA 70-210, to it probably would be the 55-300 to PLM based on all of those um, criteria. But, you know, there is the reasons why I bought the 70-210 to is to make money um, and be a workhorse lens and that's what it's going to be and that's what it is for me anyway. You know, going off the 55 to 300 PLM and where that, that lens falls down, the shortcomings that it has, because it does have some, the main ones being that in ex it's an external zoom. So it obviously extends outwards when you're zooming in and out. And for me, when I'm at the tracks, the motocross tracks, it just gets so dusty at times. And at other times, it could be lashing down with rain. You know, you're shooting in all weather conditions. And I can't stress enough that although this lens is weather sailed, the 55 to 300 PLM, it still can suck in moisture and dust. And that's what it has done. If you look inside the elements of mine, um, there is dust in there. So it does need servicing and cleaning out, get the 
the dust cleaned off the elements inside the lens. Where with the 70 to 210 lens, it's internal zoom. So there'll be none of that happening. There'll be no dust getting sucked inside, hopefully. Um, another reason is the constant F4. Now on the 70 to 210, where the 55 to 300 PLM, that's a variable aperture lens. It's a zoom lens, variable aperture. You know, as expected, it's not a top of the line, top of the range lens. Um, you know, I mean, what is it? It's, it's about four hundred pound UK sterling, just off the top of my head. Um, so you can't expect it to be like an f four throughout. That'd be pretty crazy if it was. Where with um, the seventy to two ten, it is an f four throughout. So I've just got that much, that bit more consistency, and that extra bit of light that I can let in. I didn't need to go for an f two point eight. That's why I haven't, among among other things. Um, but them are basically the main two reasons. Um, it wasn't for fast autofocus because, as I said, the PLM lens had that over the 70 to 210. But the main reasons being internal zoom, not sucking in dust and moisture and all the rest of it, and a constant f4. Another perfect example of what led me to choose the 70 to 210 f4 lens is because obviously I've told you that I also shoot Canon, the 7D Mark II, and the only lens that I own for that camera is the EF. 70 to 200 f4 most of my paid work for the motocross photography throughout the summer is with the canon and the af 70 to 200 i mean i say that i have been using the um the pentax k3 mark 3 with the other plm lens the da star 16 to 50 for them close up wide angle shots i mean i love them as well um but yeah the the Canon EF 70 to 200 F4 is basically what led me to get the DFA 70 to 210 because I've just been so happy and content with the stuff that I've been able to capture with the Canon. But, you know, my heart lies with Pentax and I just like the image quality out of Pentax. So if I can get that lens on a Pentax body, which this pretty much is, then it's happy days. And from now on out, it's going to look like I'm just going to be using the K3 Mark III with that setup, the DFA 70-210 and the PLM lens, the 16-50 um, PLM. So now I'm going to show you some examples of the images that I got from the setup, the K3 Mark III and the DFA 70-210. I'm sick of saying that now, babbling on. I've said it so many times. I promise you, I'm not doing it for the algorithm. <laughs> I'm just saying it because it's the video this is what the video is about but um i'll show you the images that i got when i sorted all of those auto focus issues out what were coming across to me as issues and um it does seem that we've sorted them all out because it was the the day after i was there on the saturday for the video previously what you've seen and then i went back on the sunday and i'd sorted those issues issues out and yeah just have a look at these images tell me what you think I think they're fantastic to be honest, so yeah, have a look at those. So now, as promised, I'm going to be able to do that video that I wanted to do. So I've got the Pentax K3 Mark III, and I'm going to pit it up against the Canon 7D Mark II. Now, you know, a lot of people, quite rightly so, will be saying, why are you pitting a fairly modern um, DSLR camera, the Pentax K3 Mark III, 
released in 21, 2021, I believe, up against the Canon 7D Mark II, which is not even made anymore, and it came out in 2014. But the reasons I'm doing that is because these are two cameras that are in, like targeted towards the same thing, pretty much. Fast autofocus, they're both DSLRs, and I just want to see where the, the K3 Mark III ranks up against the Canon 7D Mark II. Now, there's another camera that I could have done this with, uh, tested with, and a lot of people might mention this, is the uh, Nikon D500. Obviously, I don't own that camera, so I can't do that test. Who knows, in the future, I might just pick one of them up to <laughs> purely to do a test on. I doubt it, like, but... The Canon 7D Mark II, the Nikon D500, and the Pentax K3 Mark III, all APS-C cameras, all sort of aimed at the same user base, I would say. And... Um, I just want to see whether if the K3 Mark III tops the pile. Also, a lot of people have been asking for a comparison video between the DA 55 to 300 PLM and the lens that I've just picked up. This video is about the DFA 70 to 210. So I will also be doing that video. And again, I'm going to hold no. I'm going to go into that video or that test, that comparison video, with no sort of like, oh, I want this lens to do better, I want this, I'm just going to, you know, show it for what it is, the good points on both lenses and the bad points, and then at the end of it, I'll discuss, and you guys can get involved, comment down below of which lens you prefer, and why, what are your reasons, because everyone has different reasons for choosing different lenses for different styles of photography, it's whatever suits you best, at the end of the day, so as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.